Maxim had a very interesting report upon the topic about the threats associated with GPS. The only thing that was not clear from the report was that, in fact, we're now on the conference upon cybersecurity, right? So the question is, what are the risks and threats for this sector, that is, from the viewpoint of the consumer? Well, let's say my navigation jumped and the coordinates have changed, and the only problem I got with this is that instead of being around the Kremlin, where I actually am physically am right now, the system shows I'm in Vnukovo. Well, that's all. I mean, is there a problem, really? Same thing might have happened with the car, but as for me, it's not that serious. I mean, the car didn't end up in a crush or something like that. Could you please explain it in more details? Why is it all that bad? And why do we have to fear that? Well, actually, spoofing is not really a problem for the ordinary people. There were some cases when taxi drivers suddenly jumped from the center of Moscow to the airport. It's a well-known case, but in fact, the navigation system resolves another problem, and it's far more complicated. I'm talking about obtaining the exact time that is synchronization. And if for determining the coordinates of your location, you have at least an option of seeing that with your own eyes. I mean, you can actually see that your ship location has jumped from the Black Sea to the Gelenjik airport, this is quite an obvious problem. Of course, it'll make the members of the ship crew a bit nervous. But on the whole, it won't be considered a super critical issue, although many people will feel the opposite. The problem of spoofing, first of all, carries risks for the timing systems, because for now, there are no alternatives to DNSS apart from the atomic cesium clock that costs around $100,000. But even so, if you choose this option with a clock, you will also need to adjust them periodically. And when the time is shifting, you have no base, you cannot react and understand that your time server started giving out wrong time. And what kind of risk or threat could there be? It all depends on the end user. Imagine you have a bank. You have some transactions and they are all inserted into the database and get signed with a timestamp, or bidding, or high security trading. Anyways, it's very important to understand the order of operations. In case at this moment during the trading day you get under the spoofing, your timestamp is put out of order and it changes the sequence of transactions in the database. Is it a critical point? Of course it is. Or let's say you are a smart power grid operator, you need to monitor the network to maintain 50 Hz. There are devices installed everywhere in the network to measure the phase and frequency, and they are also synchronized with DNSS. And if you have a time shift, you will get incorrect data and the network balancing will be wrong. Here, the consequences will not be just in the database. They can be very significant consequences, such as large-scale power outages or failures at substations. Yes, well, another question. There was another example in your presentation. It concerned the TV broadcast, right? Yes, now, specifically in Russia and in many other countries, the standard DVB-T2, it requires a super high timing accuracy because all transmitters use one frequency and they work on different time slots. Therefore, it is important to have clear synchronization. If it falls, then all regions are cut down. So, television is a critical infrastructure. Critical, that's right. As for the infrastructure, again, per minimum, these risks can fall upon such sectors as energetics, financial industry, TV broadcast, right? I think communication systems can be affected. That's right. In fact, today 5G is a growth driver for the development of synchronization systems because 5G requires a strictly highest accuracy of at least 60 nanoseconds. Well, it all depends on the type of network. In the future releases, if you want to use navigation upon the base stations in your network, I heard the requirement will be up to 6 nanoseconds. But frankly speaking, I cannot even imagine how they could supply this. Right now in Russia, all operators use GNSS for synchronization. 
At the moment, we work with one of the operators upon a pilot zone, and in fact, we see problems with GNSS signal reception. Of course, the network does not fall down completely. It's just that there is a performance degradation. Well, as for me, of course, I was negatively surprised by the initial cost of two hundred dollars. That this would be enough for any potential intruder to get the equipment that can function on a small range already to deal with this kind of attacks. Could you please tell me, within your experience, if there were some real attacks registered? Not when it was on behalf of the government agencies or special services, as we saw in the presentation near the Kremlin, where we actually know from the very beginning who stands behind these anti-drone systems. No, I mean when it's done by real cyber criminals. When there is some kind of attack towards a natural person or an enterprise, maybe you could tell me about some kind of such action if there was any. Well, actually, if we talk about spoofing, we can just detect it, but we can't imagine or understand why this spoofing took place where it came from and why it is being generated. Is it because someone's fooling around, or there was a student who bought a hack RF for $300 and just started spoofing? That's why it's hard to identify it. But the only thing I can say for sure is that in Russia we detect spoofing every day and it's from 5 to 20 percent. The only thing is that the guys from the Federal Security Service, whoever was the owner of these funds, they are now trying to direct the antenna pattern of spoofers higher so that the civilian infrastructure is not seriously impacted. But here we have another effect. You mean the aircraft? No, no, it's all about the owners of time servers. In order to obtain exact coordinates, they also need to see the whole sky, so they also have to put their antennae higher, and therefore down at the street everything may seem all right. And you check your phone, you don't jump anywhere, if antenna is high, then everything will get spoofed. I see, yes, well, uh, and how could we deal with it? I mean, we do see the signal from navigation systems that the signal gets under spoofing from 10 to 20 percent, right? So, will your company introduce any kind of solution here? I mean, as far as I understand, your company does have one already, right? Well, yes, that's true. We develop a spoofing detection system for time server protection. But in fact, frankly speaking, there is no option to get a full protection against spoofing. It's only possible to detect spoofing with 100% guarantee. There are military technologies called beamforming and null steering. This is a technology when a complex antenna system is used, and we get a detection of the direction of radio signal arrival, and it is suppressed. There's a so-called spatial signal processing. Such antennae are very expensive for the civilian infrastructure and are unlikely to be used in this industry. Besides all that, in fact, this is subject to export controls. It cannot completely resolve the problem with spoofing. They can just weaken the fake signal for some percentage or better to say for some decibels. What is the problem of satellite navigation? The satellite is on a very high orbit and the power is very low because no wires to deliver power, so there are only 60 watts and the signals on the Earth's surface are below the noise level. So, even if you put an expensive antenna system, it'll attenuate the fake signal only by 40 decibels. It's still nothing and technically not worth it, because spoofer is on the surface without power limitation, and it is possible to add an amplifier for $200. In any case, counterfeit signal will be stronger. Therefore, the only way is detection and switching to backups. Well. Still, for the enterprises or companies uh, for whom it is important, and I mean the importance of your product or service, is it actually sold as some kind of a hardware that has a soft in it, or how does it work? 
Well, briefly, we have our own hardware. It's measuring device, which must be installed near the protected time server, and it measures parameters of all satellite signals and sends this information in real time to the cloud. In the cloud, we use machine learning for anomalies detection and classification. That is, we're looking for distortion in the spatial characteristics of the navigation field. And naturally, the system is capable of detecting different types of scenarios, and we cannot get spoofing upon ourselves. Well, it's quite curious, but I still have such a case now. Nowadays, there are digital enterprises, right? For example, it could be a coal mine, where all the equipment is unmanned and utilizes navigation, and for each transfer there is a task to go somewhere by GPS coordinates. All this can be controlled from a single room. Let's say that some attackers decided to paralyze this enterprise and they decide that instead of $200 or $300 they would invest around $1,000 so that they could install equipment that would be more powerful and somewhere along the edges of this mine in the forest and this way they will start to interfere in the process of navigation. Well, I reckon this kind of situation is quite possible. So the question is, are there any possible ways for this enterprise to protect itself from the attack? As far as I understand it, probably not. In fact, there is no 100% protection, but you can try to detect the quality of navigation signal. And you will have just the fact that now the navigational field cannot be used and you can either switch off the equipment or start using inertial systems. If the car is moving and its wheels are spinning, this is also easy to monitor. Of course, positioning error rises over time and that's okay for any inertial system. But in the first minutes of spoofing, you can even keep working and you you will have time to detect the direction of radio signal arrival and just find the one who's in charge of the assault. Actually, I would like to share another curious case. Just a few days ago, our Chinese colleagues contacted us. Their company develops drones for special drone shows, when instead of the fireworks, people launch these drones. And it's quite a fashionable feature nowadays. And so, during their latest performance, their competitors launch spoofing and all the drones start to fall down. Of course, the performance was respectively terminated, and our Chinese colleagues received penalties. Uh, we are negotiating with them trying to find the ways of how we could help them. What they need is the very fact that it was not for their reason that the drone show was interrupted, that this all happened because of navigation field. Further on, it should already be the regulator that steps into the process, that is, police will need to act in order to figure out who was actually doing that and who is to blame. Wow, that's quite an interesting case too. That's kind of an example from a commercial life, what kind of influence it can have. Well, Max, thanks for this interesting interview. I think our viewers also learned a lot of new things about this problem. And I also wish you good luck in development of your company and in bringing it all to the wide audience. I mean, the need to protect against this kind of threat. Thank you.